All right. Hi, everyone. I'm going to try to keep this intro as brief as possible because I know that you want to get straight into learning the song, but I do want to explain what this video is about and what it's for. The video is divided up into three parts. The first part is all about sight reading, so I made this notation. Hopefully it's all right. I know that there are a lot of different interpretations of how the rhythm of this song should go, but I tried to keep it as simple as possible. So I made the notation. That'll be up on the screen for you to watch while I'm playing in the background very, very slowly. So hopefully what you can do is play along with me and read the sheet music at the same time for sight reading practice. The second part of this video is going to be all about ear training. So if you happen to watch my cover of this song, you will have heard in the instrumental part that I played the melody on the cello, but then I also had um, secondary notes added along to that to make it into a fuller sounding section, as full as it can be on a single instrument, on a single stringed instrument. Um, so what I did to do that is I played what are called double stops, which are two notes at the same time. And I didn't write that out mostly because I wanted to give you the challenge of learning it by ear. So of course I'll give verbal instruction as we go, but um, I wanted you to hear it in the context of the chord progression and uh, really try to pick out those harmonies of what I'm doing. And then the third part of this, of this video is only available on Patreon. I know, that's such a cheap trick, right? But eh, I'm an artist. I gotta make a living somehow. So find me on Patreon if you would like to see the third part of this video where I talk about um, briefly uh, singing and playing at the same time. I don't want to give away all my tricks, but I do have a couple tips that I'm willing to talk about. And um, I'm also going to talk about improvising and um, accompanying oneself in terms of uh, what you can do with that, what are your options, and I'll of course go over some of the notes, the actual notes that I, I used in the video that I made for the cover video. Anyways, uh, so real quick, one more thing before we get started. Two more things. Um, sometimes I feel guilty that I'm not making tutorials over very serious classical pieces or even the Suzuki pieces, which I have done a couple, but they're not very detailed. And the reason for this is I want to leave that up mostly to your own private teachers because they can really get, really get detailed with you and they can watch how you play certain, certain things, all the nuances that are involved and they can give you live feedback. And uh, maybe I will make more of those videos in the future, but in this video, I really just want it to be fun. I want it to be something that you can just play and enjoy and share with your friends because you probably know the melody. Your friends probably know this melody as uh, something that you can show off and just have fun with. Um, and again, the things that we're going to be talking about, sight reading and ear training and all of that. Uh, those are, of course, good things to know. But really what this video is for... Uh, this video is for the people who maybe have a hard time getting motivated, just picking up the cello and deciding to practice today. And I can relate to you guys. Um, but hopefully you can see this song, this video, and be like, oh, I want to learn that. And it, it'll actually encourage you to pick up your cello today. And once you learn this, maybe then you can transition into something a little bit more serious and more challenging. Or you could even use this, this song as a cool down. Um, whatever you want to do, but I hope that this video brings you one step closer to reaching your goal and hopefully motivates you to practice today. The last thing I'm going to say, promise, I want to give a shout out to one of my awesome sponsors, Fiddler Shop. They gave me this Holstein two-star cello bow. And that's the name of it. And you'll get to hear how it sounds today. If you like the way it sounds, be sure to go and check out their website. They have a lot of really good products. And that is all I have to say. So let's actually learn this song. All right. So first verse, hold me close and hold me fast. The magic spell you cast. This is La Vie en Rose. Ignore my potentially terrible accent pronunciation. All right, so uh, you'll see that I have all of this written out in first position. There is one extension backwards, but that's not so hard, and we can talk about that. It starts out on G, finger four, on the D string. And real quick, let me use this as a, as a teaching moment. Um, whenever you're sight reading something, you want to check what is on the page in a specific order. So first you look at the clef. It's in bass clef, right, because we're cellists. 
And then the key signature is one sharp, F sharp. F sharp is always the first sharp. You're never gonna have those out of order. If you have one sharp, that means you're in the key of G major, um, which ex you know makes sense because we're starting on the note G and yeah. Um, and then you look at the time signature, this is four, four. Again, there are a lot of uh, different rhythmic interpretations of this piece. I actually did mine, if I remember correctly, in kind of a six, eight swing feel, uh, which is definitely not notated here, but since it's four, four, um, I figured this would be a little bit simpler and it, uh, you know, it feels feels reasonably accurate, and most of the things that I found online uh, had it in 4-4. Four, four. Um, the first note is a dotted quarter note. Sorry, I have to lower my end pin here. Uh, dotted quarter note, uh, so you hold it for, uh, you count one, two, and then you change on the tay of two. Um, and then before we actually start, let me skip ahead. You see the G sharp in measure three. That is where you extend your first finger backwards. So in first position on the G string, the first finger goes on A. But since G sharp is a half step lower than A, we just kind of extend finger one backwards. Um, our tempo is roughly, let's see, three, four. <laughs> again and I'm gonna go even slower three four If you're uh, confused about what fingers to use, let me go ahead and slow this down even more and I'm gonna say the fingers as I go. So finger four on the D string. Three. One. Open D. Three on the G string. Four on the D string. Three on the D string. One. Open D, three on the G string, open G, three on the D string, one on E, open D, four on the G string, and then here's where we extend our hand backwards, finger one on G sharp, shift up, finger one on A, this is just regular first position, and then finger three on the D string, finger one on the D string, and then open D. So let me do it again, very, very slowly. I'm not gonna say anything. Try to play along with me if you can. keep good time. Most string players can't. Don't let that be an excuse though. Keep practicing with that metronome. Um, hopefully that's making sense. So that's the first first little verse there. Let me go to the second. Uh, nothing has changed in terms of key signature, time signature, clef. It's all the same. Um, the rhythm is the same in this first measure as the very first measure of the whole piece. You have a dotted quarter. This time, though, we are not starting on finger four on the D string. We're starting on open A. So here's open A. And then finger four on G. Three. One. Four on the G string. Four on the D string. Three. One. Open. Four. Again, then 
shift up again. Finger one, first position on the G string. Three on the D string. One, open D. Here is the third one. Um, when you press me to your heart, I'm in a world apart, a world where roses bloom. Um, this is just like the very first thing that we learned, but a slight twist at the ending. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but we'll briefly go through it together. <laughs> shouldn't be too hard either and then uh, here's the the next bit and when you speak angels sing from above everyday words seem to turn into love songs okay so um, here you can stay in first position if you would like or you can go up here and uh, be in third position. I think that's a fine option. So if you want to be in third position, instead of playing open A, you play A on the D string with finger three. So it toggles between three and one. Um, I'm going to play this first uh, just to give you an idea. So three, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one. And then since you're already in third position, you can just go over and put your third finger on the G string on D. And then uh, just repeats until here, where you can shift up into fourth position and put third on B on the D string and then one on A on the D string. Something like that. Um, I will play it slowly. A slight uh, ritardando there at the end of the line. Use as much rubato as you want. Completely up to you. And then here is the last section. So again, very very similar to the first part. This is a rather strophic song, not entirely, but. <laughs> the entire song with the notation. Okay, so here's the second part of the video. I'm going to be showing you the double stops, um, what I do. Hopefully it makes sense. Uh, here's the first part, and it's held against an open G drone. It sounds pretty okay. And then the melody goes down to an F sharp, finger three on the D string. So... And against this, I play fourth finger on the A string. So. And then from here, I actually adjust the melody for this part. So. Second double stop. Here, you can either go. If you can 
hear the difference, but that's what I'm deliberating about. Either way, you still end up here on the E and you play a C on top of it. And then an open D. All that is without any double stop, without any drone. But here, whenever we reach the E, so this is the fourth measure, um, you can play fourth finger on the G string with it. It's a bit hard to tune, but... And then you can also hold that C, fourth finger, against the open D string as well. This part gets a little bit tricky, but... So you see on the A, we're going to play that against finger 2, C on the G string. So it's 4 and 2 together, which is pretty easy. No double stop here. Here we could add, again, the 4th finger on the G string. So we would play that uh, tritone, F sharp, against C. Same thing for this E here. Basically, you just keep coming back and adding fourth finger on the G string. Until here, the last measure, we play finger one E against the open G string. And then here's the last part. I'm sorry, I'm probably overdriving this mic. I hope it's not too obnoxious. So, nothing changes in this. So four on the D string and one on the G string. And then here's the fun part. Let me pull this up. <clears throat> so um, basically we hit our bottom two strings together and then we go over and we hit our top two strings together. So C and G first, open strings. One on E, open A. So it's two in the lower half of the bow, and then the top two strings in the upper half of the bow. You can grab that little melody there, yeah. And then we shift our first finger back into half position, so we get this chord. So it's open G, open D, sorry, what am I saying? Open C, open G on the bottom. And then D sharp finger one against open A on the top. And then here, finger three on the G string, open D, open A. Again, we hit that melody there. And then here's the last big chord. One on the C string for D, four on the C, on the G string for C, three on the D string for F sharp, and then A. So these bottom two strings, again, and then top. Whoa, I got that slurp in there. So I'm going to play really slowly. back into the last part right here so basically what we did before you can do whatever you want at the end honestly um let me play this through slowly the end um 
and play around with those. I just improved that basically and went with it. Uh, so there's definitely no right way to do this. Just do whatever you think sounds good. Um, of course, trying to stay as true to the piece as you possibly can. Um, I guess you don't even have to do that really. All right, third section. Uh, for those of you who are gonna go find me on Patreon, thank you. I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. And for those who um, are gonna go watch some other YouTube videos or hopefully you're gonna pick up your cello and go practice. Thank you for watching this video and uh, keep an eye out for my next, my next post.